<laughs> Listen, Winnie, can, before I go, I just want to point out another one. Uh, over the years, uh, when I looked into these operations, I kept bumping into shoes. There are these uh, trainers lying all over the place. And in the beginning, I thought, well, that's odd. Well, there's another one. That's odd. It's more or less always Nike trainers. And over the years, I, I, I had, uh, you know, I have everything categorized. I've got like 2.3 terabyte of, uh, of evidence that I have in a vault that people can access if they go to my website, Light on Conspiracies, and sign up. But uh, uh, so I had this folder with shoes, and it just kept, you know, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I thought, this is just unreal. What is up with all of these shoes? So I started looking into it, and it's so often when there's one of these alleged uh, gruesome incidents, you know, when you got blood and dead bodies, and then in the in the forefront of the of the image, there's a trainer, uh, or uh, uh, you know, there's police standing there, and their trainer is lying in the street, or there's a, an alleged uh, uh, plane a crash or whatever. Very. Um, there's a lot of very strange incidents uh, late in the last few years. And what do you see? You see the photo is of a trainer. And that has nothing to do with on mass shooting or shooting at a nightclub on Manhattan or whatever. The image from the nightclub, it's not the nightclub, it's not the shooting, it's the shoe. But what the hell was on, is of the shoe? So I started looking into that more and more. And I, I, I found out that ever since the Holocaust, I believe that was the first time when the shoe was uh, used as a symbol of death. You know, these mountains of shoes symbolizing all of these alleged victims in the death camps. And then I went to the Korean War, shoes, 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 Vietnam War, shoes, 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 Balkan War, shoes, shoes. And in so many different areas that were connected to death, there were shoes. So I was thinking for a while that I thought that maybe this is a, sort of like a business card, you know, that they're, the people behind these operations as, uh, as a sort of uh, secret business card so they could show their colleagues around the world, yeah, it's our operation, it's our operation, that that was the reason why these shoes were there. Then a Freemason contacted me and said, that could be true, but also you have to understand the, the significance of these shoes. Because just like in Freemasonic rituals, uh, if you have one shoe off and often your trousers leg up, one of the trousers leg up, that shows that that individual is doing it voluntarily. Two shoes off means homage to the sacred space because they see these operations as a ritual or a sacrifice. And so when you look at these type of operations, like for instance, uh, the car attack in Melbourne, that's a perfect uh, example, look at all of these shoes lying around. Look at the victims that are missing shoes. I've spoken to police officers, ambulance drivers, firefighters. Is it normal when there is an incident like this that shoes are lying around? And they say most of the time, absolutely not. So it's very odd. I mean, sometimes it even rubber boots and stuff that just doesn't fall off. And so the more I've been looking into it, I've done hundreds of interviews. I've done in total, between 500 and 1,000 interviews that you can uh, watch on YouTube, even though many of them, especially when we talk about false flag, get shut down within 24 or 48 hours. But anyway, I was doing a show together with CIA whistleblower uh, Cody Snodgrass. The, uh, the, he was an independent black op contractor for more than 20 years. And he was also involved in MKUltra, which is uh, where they, through mind control, create... Uh, they they destroy people into assets that they can control to be used in different operations. And one of the ways they do that is to uh, make this poor individual go through incredible scrutinizing pain and torture. And in that way, they make the personality, when, when the uh, persona cannot cope anymore, the personality splits into um, more than one person. So, and then through signals or symbols, they can then activate the new part of this person and use that as an assassin or a patsy or whatever. And this is what you often see in movies where maybe somebody gets a, a phone call and they say a secret word or a secret code or a secret song or whatever, and boom, suddenly this person turns into like a zombie type of person that can then go and do whatever they, he gets ordered. 
to do. But what uh, what uh, Cody said was when they when they destroyed an individual uh, to become an asset, often it was through uh, rape and torture and so on, and they held like a, a symbol in front of the face of the, this person while the pain was there. So every time the pain was there, the, they showed the, the symbol. They held up, it could be like an upside down dolphin or wavy lines or whatever. And then uh, when they finally had accomplished what they wanted, it was enough just to show the symbol and boom, the person went into this traumatic state where he was uh, being able to to be controlled. So what Cody said when we did an in a, we did a, an interview together, and these shoes came up, and he said, "I think I got, got another level to that because these shoes have appeared there in hundreds. I tell you, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of mass shootings and alleged terror attacks and alleged uh, accidents. The shoes are there in the foreground, and he said." What he believes the shoe is there to do is like a global mind control trigger because over the years we have so many times seen an alleged attack or something gruesome happening and then the shoe is there. So you have the trauma and then the shoe is there. And, and uh, I spoke to a, a psychologist and he said also what you, what the, even though the, the human mind or the human mindset is really sort of obsessed with seeing the body's destruction. Like if you pass a, a road accident or whatever, people are so nosy, they want to see what happened. At the same time, oh my God, I saw some blood. Oh, it's good. So once you see the awful thing, your eye try to protect yourself and it look, try to look for something familiar. And in this case, the shoe. So you have like a double action. You see the horror and then you, you avoid it and you get the second boom from the shoe. So what Cody was thinking was that he thinks that this shoe is there as the trigger to get us into fear mode because we've seen it so many times. No, we don't notice it. Most people, it's on a subconscious level. You just see, oh my God, there's been another mass shooting. The shoe is there, boom, it triggers you into that. Also, one of the first things you do in the morning is you get dressed, you put on your shoes, you see the shoes, and subconsciously you get back into anxiety and a, a bit of fear. Along with then you add it on with the newspaper, you start reading about horror, 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 which is their agenda also to keep us in this whole mode. So the shoe is very important to be aware of. So I've done hundreds of interviews about shoes. I've also done a presentation called uh, uh, the sh um, Shoes of Death or, or Shoes, the symbol of death. And uh, so, for instance, now when this happened in Christchurch, what is the image that is being spread internationally in media? Have a look. You will see it's a shoe and there's some uh, bandage with blood on it and some uh, debris on the ground. That is, I've seen that in Dutch newspapers, Swedish newspapers, Danish newspapers, German newspapers, American newspapers. It's the same image, the shoe, the shoe, the shoe. Then you start looking at the different victims. The, like there's one uh, woman that is lying face down, covered with a blanket, no shoes on. Uh, you got, there's another image of police officers standing with machine guns. Look in front of them, there are two trainers on the ground. It, they're not even close to anywhere where they're, they're victims. It's not a cordon off area. The shoes are just there. So this is a giveaway when it comes to these operations as well. The shoe is the trigger. And after I pointed this out, many, many people around the world have become aware of it. It's almost become a, like a joke. So it feels now like they're making a soft transition into bicycles uh, as this trigger. So for a while, it's been both shoes and bicycles in the background that are lying down in the street and so on. And now they're trying to ease out the shoe and just leave the bicycles there. So shoes and bicycles, keep those in mind when you open up the newspaper and you read about these things and you will see them coming again and again and again and again. And when you see them, just the same way as if you hear about a drill or a lone crazy guy or a lone fanatic. These are red uh, alerts that should go off like bar, 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 because why they want a lone crazy individual or a lone wolf, the reason why they want him alone 
is by be, because then by law there's no conspiracy. A conspiracy is when two or more individuals are involved in criminal activity. So if he's alone, then in the courtrooms and so on, and especially if this person is suicided or killed on location, then it's case closed. Thank you and game over. And the reason why they want him mentally ill or crazy or a fanatic is because then there's no motive, there's no need for motive. He was crazy, he was a fanatic, he was, you know, a Muslim. Boom. And they weaponized these words like Islam and Muslim. So that when you just need to say Muhammad and your brain would say, oh terrorist, you say Islam, oh terrorist. And so that's how they do it. And it's done by design and on purpose. So please keep an eye out for these things as well. Uh, well, I, I noticed that the um, uh, you're frozen, by the way, Ole. You might have to turn your webcam off and then on again um, in order to reset that. But uh, I was looking at some of the images in the papers, and uh, it had people with one leg, uh, one uh, leg of their pants rolled up, and everything like that. And I was like, where yeah. have I seen that before? Ah, that that that, uh, that shooting in London or something like that with the Freemason helicopter come down and all the crisis actors and everything like that. Ah, you know, um, but I didn't know what it meant. What does the one pant leg up mean exactly? Just just if you can encapsulate it's, that in a few seconds. It's a Freemasonic symbol. It's uh, what they do in their rituals. Uh, one trouser leg up and one two up means that this person is doing it voluntarily. They're taking part of this, but they're not being forced and it just shows that they're part of the whole thing. And two shoes of means homes to the sacred space. Oh, so okay. uh, I'm just I'm just typing that down because uh, that's that's something I'm actually going to have to refer back to the audience when I go through the uh, the evidence uh, later on in the live stream. Uh, check out the uh, if you want. I can send you some some of these photos uh, when I when I say bye bye. I'll send some of these photos to you. But also one thing that is interesting, I find spoke about this earlier before, and you will see many times in the background uh, this appears. Uh, you have uh, uh, the name of the Holocaust is actually Shua. Uh, I don't know if that's just a coincidence, but I find it interesting. Okay, thank you Ole so much for your time, brother. You have yourself a wonderful evening's rest and all your hard work tomorrow I think is going to be voluminous. In fact, we may be doing a second live stream tomorrow on this after we get through all the um, evidence and stuff like that because this is the problem, ladies and gentlemen. I generally don't come out and, 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 and uh, do all of these live streams, hot on the button issues and, and all of that kind of stuff. Frankly, because the amount of information that you need in order to understand the scenario and in its context usually doesn't exist at that particular point in time mm -hmm. but however luckily we have experts from all over the world who have been looking into incidents like these and much like an animal tracker they can see the trail even though we cannot Ole thank you very much and uh, we'll see you again sometime brother thank you and I hope to be back with you because then you will get it straight from a former professional that spent uh, your part of his life doing these things so you can get it straight from him indeed we'll have cody on uh later on ladies and gentlemen thank you very much and uh thank you Ole. now uh thank ladies you. and gentlemen i do want to uh,